holding one of these bottles and looking at some of the previous art labels and noticed that the middle section of the bottle is kind of a cylinder. Well, it is a cylinder. And it reminded me of um, one of these, which is the first recorded music format that Thomas Edison invented in the uh, late 19th century, which is exactly the same time that Beck started brewing beer, by coincidence. Um, so on opposite sides of the Atlantic, there are these two things going on. I was thinking, well, why don't we try and fuse these two things together and make a sculptural object that's playable, a playable beer bottle. Edison uh, invented the, cylind the cylinder record really back about in the 1890s, but it was around 1900 that they became popular after showmen started to use them to let people um, hear, hear their voices really. The idea of having another one being made especially on a bottle and recording like that, it's quite, quite unusual. When Bex first approached us with this project, we were a little bit mindful of the fact that it may, may not be able to be achieved. Our initial concerns were getting a very good audio quality down onto a, essentially a, a tube, as opposed to a flat platter, which has been used for you know, all LPs, as you know. Most of our um, tests were done onto flat platters initially, um, to test the different substrates, because we heard of people recording onto the back of CDs, for example, but we discovered that it was quite a noisy surface noise. So we then moved on to painted surfaces and on flat platters and then progressed onto cylinder-based uh, shapes before we then converted onto the final bottle, of which we only have one. And the next um, hurdle was a device for cutting into the um, bottle, that being in, uh, a lathe, basically, a lathe tip. The main reasons for using a hard drive arm, as you see here, is that it cuts in a true a uh, transverse uh, path as opposed to a standard um, recording lathe that does up and down movements and side to side. And because the modern music has a lot of bass in it these days, uh, the needle would tend to bounce out of the groove as it were. So using this system, it does allow us to get a lot of bass energy into the track. The gag of using modern technology and then reverse engineering it back to cutting an analog cylinder. As we got a, a better and better quality track, it became obvious to us that all of the parts in the workshop were putting a noise onto the bottle. The motor and the belt and the, the bearings, you know, just as one example, but that kind of thing went all the way through it. So because the physical cutting had introduced certain harmonics, um, we, were able, we had to use a little bit of software to bring down certain frequencies that were resonating so that we had a nice even level all the way through the different frequencies on the outcome on the, on the record. We had initial concerns about delivering a very high sound quality because most of the recordings we've heard onto cylinder-based um, playback devices have been very scratchy. By lucky chance, a ghost wave track is very somewhat thrashy and heavy in the mid-range, so we weren't struggling with uh, particular high frequencies and bass heavy uh, areas of the audio spectrum. So it's, it's an opportunity to bring the band's music together with the, the physical bottle in an innovative way and sort of drag that lovely analogue uh, sound technology from the 19th century into the 21st century.